Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I paint a Sisters of Battle face. I'm going to be doing two recipes for the hair here. I'm going to be doing both black hair and white hair, so stick around for those. I'm going to start off though by painting all of the skin. Now you can see how I've still got the head on the sprue. It's just going to make it a bit easier to handle. You could have this on a pin, but I recommend that you paint the head separately. So I'm going to start off by spraying Cadian Flesh Tone over the uh, head. I'm doing this over a black base coat. It doesn't actually really matter at this point what prime you've got. You could do it over a white prime, black prime. It's not going to matter for this. I, I just happen to do it in black. And I'm just using an airbrush here, mostly because it's faster. And it gets me a nice smooth coat very fast. Now I'm going to be doing a zenithal highlight with Kislev Flesh. Now again, I'm using an airbrush here because it's a bit faster and a little bit smoother. But you can paint this by hand with a paintbrush just... Make sure you do it in thin layers. Now we're going to be hitting this from kind of about a 45 degree angle. So we're just catching the tops of the cheekbones, the bridge of the nose, the forehead, the top of the chin, and the lips. And we're leaving everything underneath with that Cadian flesh tone. So you can see there, if you turn the model upside down, you can only see Cadian flesh tone. When you're looking at it at the front, we get some nice highlights. Now I'm using Flayed One Flesh, and I'm doing a final highlight with this. Again, just from a much steeper angle than before, but I want to make sure I do get just the very bridge of the nose, the most prominent part of the cheekbones and the chin, and a little bit of the top lip there. It also goes on the eyes as well, which actually really helps for painting them later, getting all that definition there like that. Now I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade, and I'm putting this in my airbrush, and you don't have to do this step, I, it's basically optional. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spray this from underneath the model. This will just give me a little bit of a stronger shadow on the underside of the face there. For male faces, I would tend to use um, Drucci Violet for this, watered down. Because male faces have a kind of a blue undertone where their beard is under the skin. But for a feminine face, I tend to skip that and go for Reichland Flesh Shade just to give it a bit more shadow, but not the blue tone of the hair under the skin. So you can see there, much darker on the underside. And it gives us this nice contrasty face. Dead quick. Now I'm going to take some Citadel Color Contrast Gulliman Flesh and a little bit of matte medium. And you can see I'm mixing it on my wet palette. It's a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast to matte medium here and I'm going to add a little bit of water as well to it just to thin it down a touch more and you can see I've got myself a very very thin kind of almost wash like consistency of the uh, Gulliman flesh and you could do this with Franklin flesh shade but I happened to run out just before this step so and I could only get Gulliman flesh to replace it what we're going to do is we're going to paint this into all all of the kind of the very deepest recesses where the shadows would be. So around the hairline, for instance, into the eye sockets, a little bit under the nose, a little bit under the bottom lip. And uh, you can also, once this first layer has dried, glaze this into the underside of the cheekbones as well, just to get a bit more definition in the shadows there. This stuff takes a lot longer to dry than the Reichland Flesh Shade does. So... It can be quite a time-consuming step. So you can see I'm doing a couple, a couple more layers just to build up that darkness there. I didn't want to go straight in with just Gullum and Flesh straight out of the pot because I wasn't sure if that would be too much. So instead I thinned it down and applied a few layers. It took a bit longer, but you know that was time I could be painting something else while I was waiting for it to dry. You can see here, it just gives a little bit more definition to the eye sockets and the mouth and the underside of the nose, and it really gives us some nice deep shadows where the hair is uh, obscuring all of the light. So now I'm going back in with some Kislev Flesh. This is thinned down to a glazed consistency, basically, and I'm just tidying up any areas where I might have gotten some tide marks or the Gulliman flesh just made the flesh tone just a little bit darker than I wanted. So this is mostly on the upper cheekbones. A 
and a little bit on the uh, top of the chin there as well and the forehead now I'm going to go in with some flayed one flesh and I'm just going to do some highlights on the ridge of the brow down the bridge of the nose I'm also going to try and pick out the um, lower eyelids which have been sculpted onto this face they're not always there but on this one they are just use the very tip of your brush and just kind of get the side of it and you should be able to pick up the raised detail there I'm using a head magnifier to help because uh, painting faces is hard and I'm just making sure that I've got highlights on all of my most prominent areas now these should still be there from the airbrush but the airbrush uh, the colors won't have gone on quite as opaque as it will by just reinforcing it with a bit of brush painting you can see here, I'm just making sure I get it right on the tip of the nose try and leave a gap between the tip of the nose and the bridge um, if you can and I don't have a tendency to paint eyebrows on the models because um, they tend they just look weird in my opinion when you actually paint eyebrows on at this scale a bit of a weird thing so now she's got a scar on her face so i'm going to paint that in with some thinned down corn red i've actually decided since painting this model that i would have preferred a slightly less saturated color i think doom Bull brown would be better for this but this is what i used so this is what you're seeing and the important part here is it's thinned down and i'm just touching the tip of my brush into that recessed detail and then in the capillary action pull the paint off my brush into that recess and settle there so as you can see i'm not actually like painting all the way down that recess i'm just kind of touching it and letting it flow off my brush into that recess very carefully it's important not to have too much paint on your brush so wick a lot of it off on your hand or a piece of tissue or something but again yeah i think i think doom bull brown would do a bit better than corn red in this particular instance now i'm just tidying up that scar and a few of the other highlights with some more flayed one flesh if it spills over a little bit onto the highlights underneath the scar just pick those out again and it will also make that scar seem much deeper Now I'm going to take some blood letter. This is a glaze. You could also um, just use some Vallejo uh, red, red ink, for example. And I've mixed that with a little bit of flayed one flesh, just the tiniest amount added to my flayed one flesh, just to tint it slightly pinkish. And I'm using this to paint in kind of the blush on her cheeks and around her nose. Um, this is present on all human faces. You kind of have a red band across your cheeks and where your nose is um, because you've got more um, blood vessels closer to the surface there and more concentrated in those areas um, if there's a, again if this was a male model i might be glazing in a little bit of um, a blue or purple or even a slightly kind of turquoisey green tone into the chin and the jaw in order to create the appearance of stubble or just just beard hair beneath the surface because it does tint the, the uh, skin above it I'm just using this same color to paint her lower lip I'm only painting her lower lip with this color because her upper lip is so thin that it's very difficult to actually determine um, where it is at this scale so but the lower lip is quite prominent so I'm only painting that with this color and I'm just leaving the upper lip as it is and I'm going to go in, and once I've got this to a nice pinkish tone, and I'm not, oops, hit the camera. And I'm not going to uh, make it look like she's wearing lipstick or makeup or anything like that. I'm just trying to give this a slightly more uh, flush tone. And I do this on male characters as well. Everyone's lips are usually brighter or more saturated than the rest of their face. So I'm just getting this to a nice kind of warm rich tone and then I'm going to go in with some flayed one flesh I'm just going to do a few dot highlights across the top of the lip just trying to get the top corner in order to try and highlight that and make it appear a bit more shiny
If you wanted to give her lipstick or other makeup effects, then you might want to use a darker tone in this. Generally speaking, you want to have the lips be slightly darker or more picked out than the rest of the face, the skin colors. Um, just look in the mirror for an example of what to do. But, gen but good rule of thumb, horrible phrase. Uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a good idea to just have the lips just be a little bit darker than the rest of the face. Now, painting eyes is hard, and I apologize if a lot of this is out of focus, but it's very difficult to keep this all in focus. You can see how I have base coated the hair and the neck um, area, and also the eye sockets with black. No, I didn't manage to get painting the eye sockets with black on camera, unfortunately. But... Uh, it's just a bad and black thinned down and carefully applied with the tip of my brush. And I'm painting in the eyes with some titanium white here. Now any white paint will do as long as you have control over it and it's relatively opaque in one go. You don't want this to be so thin that you lose control of it and it floods into the eye socket. You want this to stay exactly where it's put. So you don't want this thinned down too much, just enough to be able to move it around. Use the very tip of your brush because she's got some hair that gets in the way and prevents you from using the side of the brush, which is how I would usually do it on Space Marines, for example. And just very carefully paint in a white line across her eyeball, leaving some of the black visible around it. Everyone in miniature painting gets eyeliner. Uh, it just makes the eyes pop out of the face a bit better. Then once you've got that white line across the eyeball, go in with some uh, black, the uh, same black you base coated with and just very carefully try and paint a vertical line down the middle of the eye. You will probably screw it up. It's okay. This is why most people tend to paint the eyes first before doing anything else on the face. I, however, am an idiot and don't do that. As you can see, it takes quite a while and you may take a few attempts in order to be able to get to the right thickness. Don't be worried about repainting over the eyes. You can do it about three or four times before you actually notice any kind of build up of paint, as long as your paint is thin enough. I actually painted the eyes three times on this head before getting it right for this shot. If the pupil is a bit too big, you can usually go in with a little bit of white paint on, just kind of make it smaller by using the tip of the brush and just kind of poking at, poking at it. And it's always useful to go back in and tidy up afterwards. So I'm going in with some black paint. I'm going to reinforce the kind of eyeliner effect all around the hair. And I also went in with some Flayed One Flesh and some of my highlight colors and just touched up the areas where I touched the cheek with some black paint. So now we're getting on to black hair. Sisters of Battle are known for having two hair, color, hair colors. It's either white or black. I'm going to be doing a half and half on this model. So we're starting with the black side. And over my black base coat, I'm just applying some thin glazes of Cantor Blue. Because if you look at most black hair under a bright light, it actually has a kind of a bluish tint to it most of the time. Um, I don't know if that's because it's reflecting the sky, or if it's just the natural colour of the hair, but, you know, that's what I'm simulating. So now I'm going with some more thin glazes of Thunderhawk Blue. And I'm just roughly blocking in where I want my highlights to be. So you can see here I'm concentrating around the crown of the head, which is kind of the uh, the band around where, kind of the corner of your head essentially. If you imagine your head is actually a bit of a cylinder, it's the, it's the top corner that runs all the way around. This is typically where your reflection would be if you're standing outside in the sunlight and being viewed by someone who's about the same height as you, or even taller than you. If they're shorter than you, they can't see that part of your head. So I'm just going with some Fenrisian Grey and reinforcing that highlight again. I'm being relatively rough here, just kind of getting it roughly in the right area where I want it, and getting it all the way up to the brightness that I want it. I'm always using downstrokes because I'm trying to copy the uh, grain of the hair here. And I'm making some of those strokes longer than others because when we glaze over it later, it will still be slightly visible underneath. I'm also adding a little bit of titanium white to my Fenrisian Grey. 
and just making those highlights brighter and brighter in smaller and smaller areas. I eventually do get almost all the way up to pure white on the very brightest areas. So now I'm using some glazes of Cantor Blue and I'm just blending my uh, bright, air, bright reflections into the rest of the hair. Do a couple of glazes of this, always ending your brush stroke where you want it to be darkest or most pigmented, which in this case is our shadow area. This will start to smooth the uh, lens out quite nicely. Make sure to get it in there towards the hairline. The center parting that they've got. And I'm also doing a few glazes of Thunderhawk Blue or, and Fenrisian Grey just to kind of, again, try and smooth out that blend and that transition. In this case, with these lighter colours, I'm ending in the brighter spot because it's a brighter colour than my shadow. So you can see that brightest reflection point is getting smaller and smaller. And as it gets smaller, it looks brighter and more like a reflection rather than just some paint. Remember to get these kind of curved, curly bits under the uh, chin here, because they would also reflect light because they'd be facing towards our light source. more glazes again just trying to smooth out this as much as possible we actually want it to be mostly kind of almost black so we're going to use some more glazes of Cantor blue into the darkest areas because to, the way that something looks black is that it again is very very close to black it doesn't have to be exactly black but it has a very bright high contrast highlight on it so I'm actually using some black glazes here just to smooth that out and darken all of those colors down a bit. And you can see that the streaky colors, the streaky lines of the highlights are showing through quite nicely then, giving a bit more body to that hair. So that was black hair, now we're on to white hair. Now I'm gonna be base coating the white hair with Gracia. This is mostly because Gracia goes on smooth and covers in about two coats, which is uh, better than Celestra Grey, which is what I would usually use. So you can see we've got a nice smooth coat of Gracia. I've left a little bit of a black line around her face just to give it a bit of shadow because this is quite an overhanging haircut. And I'm just taking some titanium white and mixing it into my Gracia to create my highlight. And I'm doing the exact same thing I was doing on the black hat. I'm painting my highlights roughly in around the crown of the model. Building it up using downstrokes, adding texture to the hair. And on this side of the hair is actually a few more Bit, bit more of um, detail going on. So there's a few more spots where highlights would catch. And I'm adding those in as well. And again, just each time adding a little bit more white to my mix. Until eventually I get all the way up to pure white for the brightest highlights. I'm trying to make sure that it makes sense with the uh, highlights on the black side there. Every so often look at it from above, make sure it was all correct. And again, using some thin glazes of Gracia to blend my highlights down into the darker part of the hair. Now it's harder to see with this white hair than on the black hair because it's not quite as contrasty. But again, just like black hair, you mostly want your white hair to be almost 
close to white in the majority of its colors, which makes those highlights quite difficult to see most of the time, but they've got to be there, which means your white hair is actually going to be gray. Like the majority of it is actually going to be a light gray. So now I'm going to use some Celestra Grey, which is a slightly darker and slightly bluer or greenier, greenier color than Gracier. And I'm just using that to apply some more shadows, just painting it in glazes down into the darker parts of my hair here. And that's just going to give it a little bit more color and a little bit more contrast than just using just the Gracier. But it's also not going to be quite as uh, harsh as, say, adding black to the mix which would darken it far too quickly. So going in with a bit more of my highlight color and just you know, keep reinforcing those highlights, making sure they're as bright as they possibly can be. And picking out a few of the raised strands of hair just to add a bit more texture to it. Now going in with some pure white just to make sure that is the brightest it can possibly be. your shadows in towards the parting and now I'm using some thin down black paint I'm just painting down the center parting and I'm using some very thin glazes of black here just to give myself the final shadows which is mostly where hair is overhanging other hair and also glazing down into that center parting just to give it a bit more shape and make it a bit more rounded. Remember, you can feather out your glazes if you're fast enough with just a clean brush. There we go, that's pretty much our white hair done. You can fiddle around with it for as long as you want, really. Much longer than the black hair, because you've got uh, a lot more visible, because you're painting on a pale canvas. But there we have it. I'm not doing a video on the base, because it's very specific to this model. So if you liked that video, give us a like, uh, leave a comment, share the video, all that good stuff. Give a subscribe, smash that bell, etc, etc. Thank you to all my patrons who made this video uh, possible. And I hope you enjoyed this series on Sisters of Battle. I plan to do more Sisters of Battle in the future because I'm absolutely really enjoying these models. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.